Right, let's take a deep dive today yeah. into Rocket Men by Robert Curson. Okay. It chronicles the Apollo 8 mission. Right. You know, humanity's first voyage yeah. outside of Earth's orbit and to the moon. Uh-huh. I have to admit, just reading about it, yeah. um, all the risks involved, it had my heart racing, you know? It's a, uh, it really is a white knuckle read. Yeah. I think one of the things that makes it so interesting is that uh, yeah. he doesn't just tell you what happened, but also gives you all the behind the scenes decision making. Right. You know, and it takes place in 1968, which is yeah. a really, really crazy year in the U.S. Yeah. A lot of turmoil, a lot unrest. Yeah. And you had this incredible pressure on NASA mm -hmm. to beat the Soviets in the space race. Yeah, he really paints a vivid picture of that pressure. Yeah. I mean, the mission was conceived in such a short time frame. Ridiculously short. Oh, it didn't even exist in August, oh, yeah. and they were launching in December. That's right. Talk about a tight deadline. That's right. Um, and I think that that urgency really added to the risks yeah. that the crew faced. Yeah. One of the biggest gambles they made was the Saturn V rocket. Right. I mean, this thing was a beast. Yeah. It was the most powerful machine ever built. Wow. But it had only been tested twice. Oh, no. And the second test actually had some pretty serious issues. So they were basically strapping themselves to this Switching giant, truck. barely tested firecracker. Yeah, yeah. And hoping for the best. I mean, can you imagine being one of those astronauts? Oh, my God. Knowing that on its third flight ever, this thing could explode on the launch pad. Goodness. Talk about nerves of steel. Yeah, definitely not for the faint of heart. No. And it sounds like the risks didn't stop there. They didn't. They they decided to fly without the lunar module. Yeah. Right? Which usually acts as a backup engine. That's right. Um, why? Well, they wanted to lighten the load. To reach the moon, and that was their solution, ditching the lunar module. Wow. But, you know, what that meant was that if they had any engine failure while they were at the moon, it could have been catastrophic. Yeah. They could have crashed onto the surface, yeah. been stranded in lunar orbit. Wow. Or even been flung off into the sun. That's terrifying. It is, yeah. There was also this detail in the book yeah. that really, I don't know, just stuck with me. Yeah. Frank Borman, the commander. Right. He got sick during the flight, yeah, and he kept it quiet. He did. So that it wouldn't jeopardize the mission. Yeah. He had... Vomiting. Vomiting, diarrhea. He, possibly a fever. Possibly even a fever. While he was responsible for piloting this spacecraft. Talk about drinks. To the moon. I mean, it makes you realize that they weren't just facing, you know, right. physical danger. Yeah. They were dealing with this mental and emotional stress, too. Right. Borman's illness that was a hidden danger. Yeah. That could have had catastrophic consequences. Absolutely. I mean, what if his judgment had been impaired during a critical maneuver? Oh, wow. The entire mission could have been lost. You mentioned earlier that Kurson kind of goes into this yes. decision-making process. Mm -hmm. Did he talk about why they decided to fly without the lunar module? He does. Okay. And I think that's one of the really interesting right. parts of this book. Yeah. He really highlights the incredible pressure the NASA was under yeah. to get this done yeah. to achieve a lunar orbit yeah. before the end of the decade. Right. They were in a race against the Soviets. Mm -hmm. And so every decision was weighted against that objective. Right. They knew it was risky to fly without the lunar module. Yeah. But they also knew that it was going to make it much more difficult okay. to reach the moon with it. Okay. So it was a gamble. Yeah. A calculated gamble. Wow. And luckily, it paid off. It's fascinating all of these pressures right. combined with these incredible risks that yeah. shaped this mission there's also this maneuver they had to do yes to leave lunar orbit and come this back home trans earth injection right tei yeah another one of those nail-biting moments absolutely this had to happen on the far side of the moon it did so they were completely out of contact with That's mission fun. control yeah if it didn't fire or yeah. misfired, I mean, right. they were stranded. Right? They were stranded. Wow. And this was the first time anyone had ever attempted this. Right. So there were so many unknowns. Well, Any well. number of things could have gone wrong. Yeah. That's why it was probably one of the most tense moments of the whole mission. I bet. Just a few minutes of radio silence. Yeah. And their lives depended on this single engine burn. It's incredible. Yeah. And it doesn't end there. It doesn't. Coming back we safely almost, oh yeah. had a whole other That's set of it. terrifying challenges. Reentry is yeah. one of the most dangerous parts of any mission.
They're traveling at these incredible speeds. Yeah. And the slightest miscalculation could send them bouncing off the atmosphere oh, or you... burning up on reentry. It's amazing yeah. all these dangers they faced one after another. I know. But we've been talking a lot about Meh. the technical challenges and all that. Right. But I'm curious about the human side. Okay. Does Kursan get into does. the personalities, the experiences of the crew? He does. And that's what makes it such a good read. It's yeah. not just a, you know, right. dry recounting of the yeah. technical details. Right. But it's a very human story. He yeah. talks about each yeah. of these astronauts, mm -hmm. Frank Borman, for instance. Yeah. He was intensely dedicated to this mission. Yeah. He had this deep-seated desire to beat the Soviets. Right. He saw this as a battle in the Cold War. Okay. And so that put immense pressure on him right. and on the crew. It's interesting how that Cold War context right. just adds this whole other... Adds another layer of complexity to yeah. this. Yeah, for sure. So Borman was driven by this competitive spirit. Yeah. But the other astronauts... They had different motivations. Well, did. Like Bill Anders. Well, Bill Anders. He was actually initially disappointed yeah. because he was shifted from lunar module pilot to command module pilot. That's right. Which meant he wasn't going to walk on the moon. Right. But he came to terms with that <laughs> and really found his role as the systems engineer. Yeah, he was responsible for making sure everything worked on the spacecraft. Okay. Which was no small feat considering all the technology. Yeah, so even though he wasn't walking on the moon. Right. He still played a crucial role. Absolutely. What about Jim Lovell? Jim Lovell had this lifelong fascination with space. Okay. And the book really captures his mm. sense of awe and wonder, mm -hmm. seeing the Earth from so far away. Yeah. You know, it's interesting how many astronauts yeah. have this similar experience. They talk about seeing the Earth and this delicate blue marble mm. against the backdrop of stars, yeah. and it really changes yeah. their perspective. Yeah. It makes them realize yeah. how fragile our planet is yeah. and how we really need to work to protect it. It makes you realize that, yeah, yeah. we all share this one planet, yeah. and we got to take care of it. We do. I mean, yeah. gosh, yeah. I can only imagine yeah. what it must have been like to see yeah. Earth hanging in the vastness of space. I know. It must have been incredible. Yeah. The perspective most of us will never get to experience. Exactly. But Curzon also gives a voice to the families yes. of the astronauts. He does, especially the wives. Yeah. He talks about Susan Borman, okay. Frank's wife. Yeah. And she was convinced that he wasn't coming back alive. Wow. You know, imagine. I can't even imagine. The kind of anxiety and fear they must have been going through. That must have been I just gut-wrenching. Yeah. I know. So it's easy to get caught up in the uh -huh. technical marvels and the achievements. Yeah. But behind all of that right. are these human beings right. with families, with loved ones. <laughs> Absolutely. Who are sharing this burden of risk and expectation. That's true. It adds a whole other dimension to the story. It does. Yeah. It really does. Yeah. We've talked about the dangers in space, right? the Saturn V, the lunar module, mm -hmm. but were there any close calls? There were a few tense moments. Yep. One that stands out is described in detail in the book yeah. during one of the engine burns. Okay. The spacecraft starts rolling unexpectedly. Oh, wow. And Borman, yeah. who remembers already sick, Oh, God. has to react quickly wow. to regain control. Gosh. It was a heart-stopping moment that yeah. could have easily turned into a, a catastrophe. Goodness. I mean, you can just imagine the tension, yeah. the uncertainty in those few seconds as yeah. he's trying to stabilize the spacecraft yeah. and prevent it from spinning out of control. It's just amazing. Yeah. His skill, right. his expertise. That he was able to avert yes. that disaster. It really speaks to does. the level of expertise and just quick thinking yeah. required for these missions. Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't just him, right? No. It yeah. was the whole crew. It right? was teamwork. It was trust. Yeah. Everyone had to work together perfectly. Yeah. Each member relying on the others. Wow. To perform their roles flawlessly. That's incredible. Under intense pressure. Yeah. It really was a team effort. It was. A culmination of all the work of thousands of people. Absolutely. On the ground. And, of course, in space. That's right. We get so caught up in the technical aspects. Yeah. But the human element is what makes these stories so captivating. It really is. So speaking of that. Yeah. Does Curson talk about what happened to the astronauts yeah. after Apollo 8? Yeah, he does. How did this experience shape their lives? 
Well, it's interesting how their paths diverged. Okay. Borman, for instance, he became disillusioned with the space program. Really? And went on to have a successful business career. Interesting. Lavelle, on the other hand, yeah. he continued to fly. Wow. And he actually commanded the Apollo 13 mission. I mean... Can you imagine right. going through something as harrowing as Apollo 8? Yeah. And then being willing to go back up there? That's incredible. It says a lot about his dedication yeah. to exploration. Right. What about Anders? Yeah, what happened to him? Anders went in a different direction. Okay. He became a really strong advocate for environmentalism. Oh, wow. Using his unique perspective from space okay. to raise awareness about the Earth. That makes sense. Yeah. That seems to be a common thread. Yeah. With astronauts who have seen Earth from space. Yeah, for sure. That understanding of our planet's vulnerability. It's a powerful message. It is. Yeah. So Apollo 8's legacy extends beyond just landing on the moon. It does. It changed how we view ourselves, right. our planet, and our place in the universe. It really sparked a wave of environmental awareness, too. And it fueled our imagination. For sure. For the possibilities of space exploration. Absolutely. So we've talked about all these things. Yeah. The technical marvels, mm -hmm. the near-death experiences, right. the Cold War context. Yeah. What would you say is the key takeaway for someone? Well, for me, yeah, this book is a testament to the power of human ambition. Yeah. Ingenuity, courage. Wow. It's about pushing boundaries, taking risks. Right. Overcoming what seems like insurmountable challenges. Amazing. And achieving something truly audacious. It really is a reminder. Yeah. That exploration is at the heart of what makes us human. It is. That drive to discover. Right. To venture into the unknown. It's a maker. Powerful force that shaped our history and will continue to guide our future. And Kurson really captures that. Yeah. In his writing. For sure. Well, I have to say, yeah. after this deep dive, Rocket Men is going on my reading list. It's a great book. For our listeners who are also intrigued yeah. by this story, mm -hmm. you can find a link to purchase the book yep. in the description. Using our affiliate link. It's an experience you won't want to miss. You won't. And, you know, as you're reading the book, yeah. think about this. Yeah. Would you have volunteered for this mission? Wow. Knowing all the risks. It's a powerful question. It is. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive into Rocketman. Of course. Until next time, keep exploring.